welcome, welcome, my sweet, dear, magical friends, to your weekly horoscope and tarot reading with me, Natalie, spelled N-A-T-A-L-E-E, -E, and the Watch Natalie channel of all things tarot, astrology, astral projection, and other psychic abilities. If someone has sent you this video, they believe there's something valuable for you to gain through one or a few of the messages contained herein. If this is your first tarot reading, this is how it works. Everyone is born psychic. You are born psychic. People like me are still psychic. The more you watch me, the stronger becomes our connection and the likelier I am to channel your messages and details. All you need to do is observe your own body, thoughts, and emotions for any reactions, subtle or strong. This means you are resonating with the message and can benefit from its guidance. If you'd like to know when I upload or live stream new messages here on the YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and toggle the notification bell so you don't miss any of your messages. To connect on social media, you can follow me over on the TikTok, same handle, watch Natalie. Please block and report any other accounts. I am a professional occultist. I answer to my full name, Natalie, spelled N-A-T-A-L-E-E. -E. I answer to the pronouns she, her. I have over a decade's worth of tutelage from an experienced psychic, and I have a lifetime of personal experience in the occult realms, which ramped up so strongly as a preteen, it necessitated learning more advanced techniques from a professional. If you're experiencing confusion, depression, anxiety, or uncharacteristically low energy, I look forward to helping you in any way that I can. Lastly, always remember that time spirals, all of my messages are timeless, and that you can reserve your Zoom time with me at theartigan.com. Link is also down in the description box below. Without further ado, let's open up your week ahead. Monday, August the 22nd. So welcome to our new setup if you have not seen it yet. Over here we have this little astrological key and this is going to help you guys learn because I am going to be going pretty fast. I'm just going to say this one time at the very beginning of these videos. Over here, this column are the planets and you can see the symbolic glyphs that will correspond over here to the, the charts, which are gonna be, I'm gonna be moving around a lot. So the planets are the energies. This is the what is operating in our electromagnetic fields. Over here in the middle, that is the flow of force between the planets. So you're a source of energy, I'm a source of energy, the planets are a source of energy, and the relationship between these two sources of energy are called aspects. So it's their relationship for you to use or abuse in your magnetic field that's this is what how it's operating but no matter what aspects there are they're always up to you like i said to use or abuse them and same is true for everyone else now over here these are all of the signs you can recognize your your glyphs this is how the energies are operating it's the character it's the conditioning so it's the ability the capacity the power to to do what the planet really wants to do it's the what the planet is the what the signs are the how and the houses so as you can see there's oh i didn't do it okay so i'll put it back on the whole sign house system let me do that right now okay so this is a little bit simpler for you guys so this is a whole sign house system it's not placidus anymore now the houses in your chart this is where the energies will work so these are the circumstances where you're working out your destiny essentially and so if you do like a natal chart reading with me or if you do any kind of consiglieri sessions we'll do we do we get into all of that there are opportunities that are offered by your environment and the house placement of these energies when i talk about them in aspect or your natal chart reading or if you have a specific question that is the area of life that they're going to be playing out. Back to Monday, August the 22nd, we have the moon entering the sign of Cancer. We also have that moon in Cancer making a square over to Jupiter retrograding in Aries. So when the moon enters Cancer, that's going to be you needing to feel safe first, that shell needs to protect all of the gooey insides and then you can nurture and then you can feel safe and feel comfortable. So if you're not feeling very safe to be vulnerable, if you're not feeling very welcome in being like just who you are, that square to Jupiter is going to alert you. It's gonna be you feeling very sharply what you need in order to either feel safe or to feel nurtured and it could be coming through some new perspectives. Also on Monday, we have the sun ingressing and you'll see it the end of day Monday. So the end of day Monday, you see the sun ingressing, entering the sign of Virgo. So welcome to Virgo season. Happy birthday to everyone. 
late degree Leo, early degree of Virgos. With the sun entering Virgo, we want to try to focus on balancing open-mindedness with discrimination very wisely. The focus for Virgo is to help get us into the next season. So it's a mutable energy. You want to focus on a flexibility and you want to try to, like I said, balance some open-mindedness with a discrimination. Virgo is going to be very highly attentive to details. So you don't want to get lost in the details and you don't want to miss any important details either. So that discernment is going to be very, very important over the next few weeks. It's also why I'm calling Monday Get Focused because we have that beautiful sun ingressing into the sign of Virgo and all of a sudden that Virgo area of life is going to get a lot busier. Mercury trining Pluto. So over... Okay, so I forgot to mention this because I wrote it in a funny little way. But Mercury shadow trines Pluto retrograding in Capricorn on Monday, August the 22nd. This is penetrating truth. Penetrating truth. Okay. That's it. Monday, get focused, penetrating truth. You have a lot of information that is just like, it's, it cuts right to the heart of the matter and it's great. It's really, really great. You're coming out of the weekend of a Mercury opposition to Neptune, but it's not the one that makes you fuzzy and hazy. It's not the one for deception because you have this trying to Pluto. It's, it's something's just over the weekend become very, very, very clear to you that that you have um, cut through some kind of something that was previously foggy or previously sort of ambiguous. Tuesday, August the 23rd, we have the moon in Cancer sextiling over to, oopsie, we have the moon in Cancer sextiling, mother of pearl, sextiling over to Uranus and Taurus. And this is going to help with that flexibility. If you need some kind of upgrade, which is going to be very apparent by the end of the week, this is going to help emotionally prep you, emotionally get you ready. So, you know, the sex cells are opportunities. They're not just like the trines that just like fall into your lap. You do have to work this energy. And I found that these sex cells can be an opportunity that comes up externally, but it can also be an opportunity that's opening up because you are internally thinking or feeling something that um, that's coming up that you're, it's on you to sort of externalize it. It's up to you to, you know, send a message. It's up to you to answer something. It's up to you to sort of be a little bit more of a participant in your, in your, in your great luck. So that's your sextile. As we move into Wednesday, there's going to be an increase in drama. I'm calling this day the plot twist because the moon is entering Leo, very high drama energy, also making a trine to that Jupiter retrograding in the sign of Aries. Also, Venus in Leo will be trining Chiron in Aries. And the biggest news of all, Uranus will station retrograde at 18 degrees of Taurus. So that's a lot happening for Wednesday. That's a lot of change, that's a lot of benefit, and it's a lot of vulnerability. So being in the sign of Leo, this moon emotionally is having us feel a little bit more ballsy, a little bit more dramatic, and a little bit more confident in just being exactly who we are and like letting the chips fall where they may. So that trine over to Jupiter retrograding in the sign of Aries is very positive fluctuations, um, positive changes that you could be seeing in the Leo area of life, possibly due to um, past actions, or you could sort of get this almost like you, you're like Austin Powers like getting your mojo back or like Stella getting your groove back. It could be sort of like this high drama of um, you realizing or remembering your worth or your value or an idea that you liked or, you know, something like that. So that could be kind of nice. Now with Venus trining over to Chiron and Aries, this is very much like you are getting a hug or a compliment or some kind of external validation that you don't want to admit that you want or that you certainly wouldn't admit to anyone or yourself that you need this. You give yourself your own validation. It's just that when you do get that validation, maybe it's from someone that you very greatly admire or respect. It just, it touches on a wound that you didn't get. So if you do really great at work and your boss, maybe it's a woman, maybe it's a man, doesn't matter. They give you just such great validation and such a great congratulations. And that could feel so much deeper for you because maybe perhaps you did not have a father who is 
a good father. Maybe they were not very solarizing and imbuing you with like a lot of confidence, or maybe you did not have a mother who was good at showing you how to take good care of yourself or showing you how to emotionally nurture yourself, you know, something like that. So that when you get that from, you know, someone in your, in your life, it just feels, it, it brings all of that back up to the surface. So it's going to be nice. It's a trine. It's something that you're getting with ease here. However, trines are static, so it's not dynamic like a square opposition. This is going to be something that feels really great, but it is going to touch on that wound. It's going to hurt a little bit, but it's going to feel better. It's going to feel great way more than it touches on that wound. So, you know, don't be afraid to be vulnerable in expressing your appreciation. Don't be afraid to to express yourself authentically. The Leo energy is authentic. It is being exactly who you are and expressing yourself. So if you are the one that needs to express gratitude or give a congratulations or give a validation to someone else, don't shy away from it because it could be very, very good and very, very healing for, for your relationships or for the situation. With Uranus stationing retrograde at 18 degrees of Taurus, this could be one last big plot twist. Like this could be one last big you know, switch up in the story. And it doesn't even have to be external for some, it depends on the degrees and your natal chart personally, but this can also just be something that is shifting or happening within you that you just, something shifts inside and that's gonna last you a few months. So, you know, just keep an eye out. If you have any planets or points or angles or anything around 18 degrees of Taurus, the tighter the orb, the better the larger the orb it's for like very very sensitive you might be feeling it but just look for anything super super tight around that 18 degrees of taurus or the earth signs or the fixed signs you could be experiencing a plot twist and this is going to be this could have something to do with late july early august it doesn't have to be it's just going to give you just enough of change and dynamism to chew on and to process while Uranus is retrograde. On Thursday, August the 25th, we see that we've got the ingress of Libra, in, of Libra, of Mercury into the sign of Libra. We also have Venus squaring the North Node in Taurus. We also have Moon conjuncting Venus, so that's kind of interesting. Now, by this time, Mercury is already in the shadow, and we talked about that in last week's horoscope, that Mercury enters and starts a shadow on Saturday the 20th. So you, you may know what this retrograde is going to be about for you, but if not, there will be another point, and we'll talk about that later. But at this point, you want to start thinking about all of your relationships, so your one-on-one -on -one relationships your relationship to groups and group dynamics, your relationship to news, to technology, to, you know, maybe you, a device that you use, maybe your relationship to your watch, your relationship to physical things, your, just your relationship to other sources of energy, but also concepts in your mind that are playing out. If you take particular pride in like a physical thing, maybe that's your representative of your relationship to materialism, just think of relationships, but of course, personal relationships. So I'm going to say this whole thing with the Mercury retrograde, Libra, it's going to start in Libra. It's going to go back into Virgo, going to go back into Libra. You want to open yourself up to the flow of two way abundance. This is very Libra energy and it's very six of pentacle energy in the tarot. And this is really what I get with this Mercury and Libra energy is that always trying to balance, always trying to stay balanced. That's, that's Libra with the scales. So just some food for thought to think about as Mercury enters the sign of Libra on Thursday, August 25th, opening yourself up to the flow of two way abundance from the universe. And this is, I'm talking a little bit more about the energetics of this. So sometimes we are the hand that gifts, that gives to others. And sometimes we're the hand that receives from others. We are in both places, you know, flip-flopping throughout our entire lives. So you're never just usually, you're never only going to be one or the other. And for those in need, if you're giving, it could be life-changing. 
And if you are on the receiving end of some generosity, that could be life-changing. You just never know how far or what it means for your generosity of spirit to go. And you, when you receive that generosity, when you see, receive an opportunity, when you receive some kindness, think about how you feel, how miraculous it feels. Like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm being supported. I'm, I'm be, I have this encouragement. It's like the universe is lifting me up and you know, saying that this is okay and, and, and advocating for what I want and, and supporting me on my destiny. You know, so it's, it's, it can be very, very life-changing, the energy of generosity. And what we want to focus on is the balance, the equal give and take. So you want to focus on how you have been and how you are inspired to give time, money, energy, or love to someone or something that truly moves your soul. It has to be authentic. You want to take action from a place of genuine love and authentic generosity. This is the thing. This is the energy work. This is it. This puts you on the path of two way flow and you will be able to give and receive fluidly in this state. I know we're in a, a shadow retrograde. This is the shadow part. So what you're going to be thinking about over this longer retrograde period is where there is not an equal give and take, where there's not a flow of two way, a two way flow of abundance here. The shadow of this energy is selfishness. The shadow of this energy is using a gift as a means to control someone or something or some situation. And that's not authentic. That is not love, truth, integrity. You will be thinking about it if you or someone else has been using generosity as a stepping stone to power, to status, or to righteousness. Is it you giving because you want to feel righteous? Or is it giving because you have genuine love and authentic generosity? You want to focus on opening your heart to the sacred balance and trusting in that, trusting in the sacred balance. And if there are any imbalances libra wants to correct it that is also justice in the tarot there's the scales and then there's the sword so after you've balanced then you cut in or you cut out anything that you know is going to support the balance that's my mercury and libra for you guys now with venus and leo connecting with the moon in leo they're both squaring the north node this is, you've already gotten a little bit of this energy. We had Mercury and we had the Sun in Leo make this square already on July 28th and August the 10th. So the Sun and Mercury did. So you're, you're facing an issue. There's still that issue coming up. So you can think around that, those two dates, July the 28th and August the 10th, any issues that are coming up you want to face the issue and solve it and it releases you from that problem or from that that issue so that's the quickest way to get rid of pain to get rid of suffering and to to move yourself out of a cycle of like lesson learning and into a cycle of um, reward into a reward cycle with the moon conjunct venus at the same time you are getting more energy that supports your creativity, your own perspective, courageousness, and bravery, essentially. You don't wanna go like dark Leo and be super selfish and super like obstinate. You wanna be fair, um, but here's the thing. Moon and Venus will be squaring the North Node in Taurus, which means they will also be squaring the South Node in Taurus. And remember, everything in astrology is energy for you to use or abuse. So. You want to, here, let me put it this way. When you remove the need to possess, you overcome the fear of loss. And that's what we're talking about with Scorpio energy and with North Node in Taurus energy is the Scorpio energy, the, the fears, the paranoias, the wanting to own or possess or control, manipulate are gonna come up and you have the choice of what you're gonna do with those feelings. I have the vlog, how to heal and move on to help you with stuff that comes up. At this time, this could absolutely be speaking to anything kind of ugly that comes up, especially the need to possess or the need to manipulate or control or feel jealous or feel insecure or feel like whatever. You wanna focus on overcoming that need to possess or control or manipulate whatever those dark scorpionic feelings that may be coming up are telling you about yourself. That will help you overcome your fear of loss because that's really what's being activated is some kind of fear. So that's a fear of loss, a fear of change, a fear of transformation, something with that 
with this connection with its little T-square with the moon in Leo and Venus in Leo and their T-squaring some fixed energy, you know, Scorpio, Taurus energy. So remember you want to make this conscious, aware decision because it's awareness that expands consciousness and helps us become even better and helps us evolve and grow. You want to use this energy to if you see the Scorpio stuff coming up or the fears are being triggered or what have you, to not be obstinate and to not stick your heels in and, and be immovable. You want to take the change and let yourself be changed by your own awareness of what you're feeling and cultivate confidence with that North Node and Taurus energy. Friday, August the 26th. I'm calling this one break out of a rut. Oh, I guess Thursday was called light bulbs. So breaking out of a rut, we have the moon with Venus and Leo squaring Uranus and Taurus. So see what you attract into your experience that jolts you out of a bad rut. This is piggybacking off of the yesterday energy with the moon Venus squaring the North Node. That's also going to be giving you light bulb moments, but also Mercury and Libra was giving you some light bulb moments. So on Friday, there's going to be more, there's going to be more you know, whatever you need to experience it's, that's always what it is for all of us so whatever we need to experience in order to stimulate the growth in order to you know take us into the territory that is going to help us really become aware and grow and outgrow ignorance essentially the struggle in ignorance is is painful and so welcome anything that comes through on a friday even if it's unpleasant even if it is unsettling just, just go with the flow. That takes us into Saturday. Now we have that new moon. And let me just get this a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so now we're into Saturday, August the 27th. We have the new moon. Welcome to your new moon in Virgo. Okay, so basically the thing with this new moon here is that it's squaring Mars. Exact. Exact. At four degrees. This is not intuitive for me. It's <laughs> um, squaring Mars. And so here's the thing. I like squares more than trines because like I said, trines are static while squares are dynamic and you can actually make some progress. You can change things on that square energy. So the energy is always yours to use or abuse. Focus on motivation. Accept where you are now. Accept that there will be challenges. There will be, listen, I am a, a sun square Mars person natally. I have my son with my Capricorn stellium, stellium in Capricorn and they square over to my Mars in Aries. So I'm the perfect person to help you guys understand that you can use this energy where it will not self-destruct and you will not implode and you will not, your, just, your head won't blow up. I mean, it might feel like it is, but it's only to teach you. It's only that you know, you have to burn yourself on the stove to learn not to touch the freaking stove. So everything I take is motivation. Everything I take has, you know, any of the frustrations or the impatience, it's all motivation. So you guys have this really energizing new moon. It's a new start, but something is really firing you up. So you can make it hard for yourself and really resist the changes that are happening. And I think that'd be really hard to do. You'd have to really go out of your way because this is happening in mutable signs and mutable signs are all about change. It's all about adaptability. It's all about flexibility and flow and just being adaptable. So, you know, it, it's, it's like this, yes, it's a square, but that's like a changing energy that the lines of force between this new moon, this new beginning and Mars, this huge motivator warrior planet is changed. So I, I, I really feel like this is going to be a good one. I feel like it's going to be a very good one. Now, remember Mars is going to be in Gemini for seven months. They started on a square to the sun and they're going to end on a square to the sun at the end of March, March 25th, 2023. So this is, this could be really, you can go into this with a great attitude or you can go into this kicking and screaming and making it that much worse for you. So I'm actually more concerned about Venus because Venus, like before the new moon is squaring Uranus and then after the new moon is going to be opposing Saturn. So that's a little weird. The ruler of this new moon is Mercury. Mercury is at one degree of Libra. We're going to come back to that. But being in the shadow of their retrograde, there should be something 
coming up very clear over the next couple of weeks where you, you'll know what this retrograde's about, and if not, you'll know at the Kazemi for sure. But think back to March of this year, because that's when we had Virgo Pisces energy. And did you, what did you believe at that time? What did you believe about your destiny? What did you believe about your life? Because we're only going to go for the destiny that we truly believe in. Do, do I really think it's possible that this person is going to work with me, love me, be a friend, be a good comrade? Do I really, because if I don't believe it, I'm not even going to try to to open the line of communication you have to really believe in it otherwise you're not going to apply for the job you're not going to talk to the person you're not going to to do the thing you're not going to write the song you're not going to write the the novel whatever it happens we have to really believe in it it's the faith and it's the spirit that drives this physical body this is stamped into the new moon i'm going to talk more about it next when we talk about sunday but just just keep that in mind that there was a, a point in March of this year where you had this. And remember, that was Pisces party energy, too. We were in the Pisces party. So that Pisces area of life earlier in the spring of this year was trying to get you to dream the very biggest and trying to get you to really believe in a destiny for yourself. So this Virgo new moon, it has the motivation with it. I just wonder if you really believe in it or not. Which brings me to oops, brings me to Sunday, August the 28th. I'm calling this day deep awareness. Over this weekend, coming into this week, so I'm talking about Saturday, August the 20th, and Sunday, August the 21st, we had we had Mars ingressing Gemini, we had Mercury entering shadow, we had Mercury opposing Neptune. I'm saying all of that about Sunday too because this moon is reactivating some of that. It's a now you're in a new moon opposing Neptune retrograding in Pisces. So think back to March of this year. Did you dream big enough? Because if you sold yourself short or if you settled for less than your worth, then you could have some emotional clarity at this time emotional clarity Sunday, August the 28th, because like I said, coming out of the weekend, you have the trine of Pluto. It's just, it's cutting through the ambiguity. It's cutting through something that was a maybe, or a let's see, let's wait and see. No, you, you kind of know, mm, mm, cutting clear, cutting to the quick of it. So on Sunday, that moon opposing Neptune, it's going to bring you an emotional clarity. You're going to be emotionally able to tune into a destiny or a reality that is either something you believe in or something that you did not believe in before that you believe in now, or maybe it's a whole new dream for yourself too. Maybe this is a whole new destiny that is unfolding for you, but it's unfolding first as a feeling and as a vision you have for your life, but you have to believe in it. That trying to Uranus is saying that you need an upgrade. You need something new and different. You need you, you cannot keep doing the same thing that you've always been done. You're just going to get the exact same results. Now we can talk about Venus opposing Saturn. So this is an awareness, a very clear awareness that you've got to reconcile. You've got to cooperate. You've got to compromise. You want to focus on a strategy and diplomacy. So you're realizing a value difference. You're realizing maybe the true weight of a commitment or maybe you're realizing that you want to make a commitment break a commitment or you're realizing something's going to take a little bit longer for you to get into or out of maybe this is you've just gotten a new job and there's this onboarding process and there's this like all these modules that you have to maybe you know work through on the on the computer and you're like oh my god this is going to be frustrating and you just want to like eat your lunch but you have to like plow through it and you have to just like do the things it can be something like that but it can also be something that you are realizing is going to take a lot more work or that maybe you even want to commit to if this is a new dream of yours or if this is like a reinvigoration of a dream or you know bringing something back into your vision for your life then i feel like this is much more helpful for you to strategize and um, be very diplomatic and it's very cooperative energy for you to reconcile your personal vision, your personal needs with the duties and the responsibilities that and the commitment that it's going to take in order to bring something to fruition. So I kind of like this. It's very it's like you're taking it seriously. This is not just like some new moon motivation that's going to just like fizzle out. This is going to be something that 
you're quite motivated to change in your life. This is mutable energy. How are we going to maneuver this? This is not going to come out to the fullest expression until spring of next year anyway. So it's got a lot. It's starting. This is like the portal that opens. And when I say portal, we're talking about that two way flow of abundance, prosperity, whatever it happens to be, but it's a portal of two ways. Read my community posts that I wrote about Mars and Gemini speaking specifically how the media is a two way portal of flow back and forth. Whereas before it was very one sided. Okay. So go check that out. And we are now going to move in to our tarot time. All right, let's take a look and see what we can expect for you guys in this week ahead. Monday to Monday, we've got some nice energy happening, some great motivation, a lot of stuff to work through, a lot of awareness to gleam. What can we expect? What's going on? Ooh. All right, we're starting strong. No, I'm kidding. We're not starting strong. A little page of wands. This is like a message. This is a communication. This is, you know, someone, um, someone very excitedly expressing themselves. This is also the child pulling at mom's skirt, like mom, 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 needing mom's attention, right? So there's something that like you kind of can't look away from. It could even be something sort of like salacious or something very, it could be very attractive, but it's something if there's a message here there. This is like my news really where there's some kind of information that's being like proclaimed, you know, from like the root. This is like the, the little paper boy that that's like standing on the corner. He's like, oh, I was going to say we're going to war, but I don't want to say that because I'm, I didn't even talk about that. But if if the U.S. goes to war from now, to March of next year with Mars and Gemini being in the seventh house, it's going to be because of a either an attack or a threat of an attack or very heated threats of an attack, or it's going to be, it's going to be a thing, but okay. Well, you know what I'm trying to say with this example, like, okay, there's a big announcement or there's something very, uh, it's getting you excited. Eight of pentacles could have to do with work, could have to do with a job. It could have to do with something that you're wanting to take on because you want to be the best at it. You want to be better at it, or you want to even want to be known for something. You want to be known as being the best or the most original or the most unique, or you want to just be, you want to carve your own little spot out um, professionally or, or just like maybe even how you see yourself like in your life. Okay. What else? Thank you. We've got the hanged man and the knight of cups. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. I'm sorry I cannot travel both. And be one traveler long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other just as fair and having perhaps a better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden back. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet, knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh. <sighs> Somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a yellow wood and I, I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. Someone has two roads that are diverging in their yellow woods in their heart space. And they are trying to decide, am I going to take the road less traveled or am I going to take the one that's bent in the undergrowth? Professionally. Do you want to be known for this or do you want to be known for that? There's could be something with your reputation. There could be something with your skill, your skill. What do you want to be known for, for being good at this, for being good at that? Oh, goodness gracious. I think we're done there. We're going to stop with this King of Cups. It does not have to be a Scorpio 
Pisces, Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising. It can be, does not have to be. Ooh, we have the Hierophant. We have the Nine of Cups and ooh, and we have the Three of, I almost said Schwartz. <laughs> like may the Schwartz be with you, like from Spaceballs. That doesn't make any sense. But the Three of Swords. The Three of Schwartz, it's funny. So overall, overall, something, something doesn't really look how you want it to look. With the Three of Swords, it's, it's swords, it's thoughts and ideas and discussions, writing and, you know, all of that. And it's, it's a... Uh, it's the image is, is corrupted or it's, it's something that doesn't look right or sound right if, if you're talking about, about what's going on in an organizational structure. If this is a company or a corporation, there's a disappointment here. You might have expected to get everything you want or you might have expected some, something to be honored, maybe a verbal agreement to be honored, but it is not in your contract. Or, you know, something was promised, we agreed on, this is what we agreed on. This is what we agreed on, and I'm not getting what what this agreement had promised me. And it's and it's disruptive to the to the image, to the to the how you saw this committed partnership, how you saw this job at this company. <laughs> Let's be aware of where these cameras are. So that's your overall. Let's take a look and see. So it does seem to be like you're at a crossroads very emotionally driven this is because emotionally you are in tune with what you're doing every day and honestly you guys if you feel like wow life is going by so fast or time and the days are going by so fast that is such a clear omen to be happy immediately right where you are who you are now where you are now if you're on like a healing journey if you're on like a professional ambitious journey if you're doing things with your family like whatever it is find a way to be happy right now because things as you go for your dreams as you go for your healing whatever it is you're going to have stuff you're going to have your karmic stuff coming up you're going to have problems and obstacles that's all going to be there so you don't have to feel crummy all the time don't don't get into like a healing trap where you always have to feel crummy about yourself. No, let yourself, let yourself enjoy the moment because it's all you have, really. Tell me about the page. Page of Wands. Tell me about this page of Wands, please. It's going on. It's going on the page of is the lovers he's the lovers mm. i'm kidding i'm totally kidding i mean maybe not maybe this is like a you know maybe this is like a romantic situation for some of you look how, look how beautiful this freaking camera is it's so nice and crisp and clear here's what i love do i have my i don't have it here here we have Adam, the conscious mind, looking at Eve, the subconscious mind, looking at Angel Raphael, the super conscious mind. To do right, to do the right things, to make the right choices consciously, you have to go through your subconscious mind in order to access your over self, your higher self, your highest guidance, however you want to put it. And that will assure that you make the right choice one way or the other. That's this mountain in the back. I mean, of course, there's other symbolism in the pictogram that I won't get into, but this is the part that pertains to you right now. So if there's a decision that's being communicated to you, if someone is selecting you for a job or <laughs> flirting with you or interacting with you okay this libra energy it's like people are going to want to interact and there's going to be some stuff happening so you know it's like if if, if you're being chosen if, if you are getting an opportunity you know if there's something kind of not you're not happy at your job 
you're already thinking about changing and you get an opportunity, you get a, a, you forgot you applied at a job a year ago and they kept your resume and there's a position open or like whatever happens, you can rest assured that you are selected because you are very vetted and you are very vouched for. So it's like a very good choice, very good choice. You may also be communicating your choice of personnel, of hiring, of, this is a people choice though. This is a, this is a people choice. Tell me about this eight of, oh, I'm so excited for the fall. I'm sorry, I don't know where that came from, but I'm just like really excited for this holiday season. Eight of pentacles. Ooh, okay, great. Excellent. You know, my excitement right there. Oh, the ten of wands and the eight of wands. Well, the great thing about this ten of wands is that it's over. The burden keeping it up, it's, it's done. Done, 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 done. It's over. There's, there's no more to bear. So this is communicating the end of a job, the end of an effort. If this is not the, if you don't work, if, if you're in this, you know, um, very fortunate position where you don't really have to exchange your time, energy, resources, skills, talents, and abilities in exchange for income. If someone is supporting you, if some, if you're in, if you're, you know, whatever your situation is, and you don't have that kind of pressure or responsibility, or you don't want that, if you don't have the ambition, if you don't have the inner motivation, honestly, as far as motivation is concerned, you guys, it is not something that you can buy for someone or give to someone or even inspire in someone. It's like if no, if you don't have that impulse, if you don't have that spark, if you don't have that fire in the belly, you can't, you can't. So don't try to convince anyone else. Don't try to, because that's three of swords is here. This is like a disappointment. This is like you made this promise and now you don't want to keep the promise. This is like Cancer Capricorn energy because Cancer Capricorn is having the discipline to keep the commitment long after the desire to keep that commitment has left you. But if you make the wrong commitment and it doesn't serve you, if there's not that equal give and take, that equal exchange, that two-way flow of abundance, then that, and you'll crush under that. That's, that's Capricorn energy, Capricorn Cancer energy. It's like we're going to crush underneath our commitments. And that's this Ten of Wands. It's like you took, you overcommitted, you took on too much. Or there's just too much happening. There's just too much going on. So this could be, I'm done. I, I, I quit. I quit. I'm, I'm quiet quitting. Or, or someone asks you, oh, nice. That's, that's, quiet quitting, you know. Um, I guess it's not quiet anymore. I guess I'm quitting, quitting. You know, it's like you're you're done with the effort. You're done with the. And you know what? <sighs> Me and my work history, whether I was working at a sandwich shop or retail or like my dream jobs, I always had the same work ethic, and I always pretended like my deceased grandfather was watching me like in the corner so if i was like sweeping a broom if i was making a sandwich if i'm you know acting on camera did not matter i was always working with the work ethic that would have made that man proud of me so you know if i, I just feel like this eight of pentacles i just feel like you're doing so much and you're just like really trying very hard but that three of swords really messes it all up you know, so it's like if you're 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 letting some effort go, you are letting some burden go, you're letting some overcommitment kind of just like or it's taken from you. I don't know, we'll see. Tell me about the hanged man and the knight of cups. That knight of cups is like my Romeo energy. I'll let myself be in the sun because look at that sunlight, sun, 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 happiness. Yay. Let's do it like that too. Oh, oh, okay. Well, there we go. Oh, you can't really see it. It's the sun. It's light. It is happiness. It is the happiest card in the deck. The 
path that you want is going to be illuminated. Let me put it that way. The, the choice, the option, the, the, the part that's like in the undergrowth and then the, the one less travel, like you're going to see them both very, very, very clearly. One's going to make you so happy. And it's just like, you know, it's, it's just, I think it's gonna be pretty clear, especially with the Knight of Cups there, like the Knight of Cups, you want to be a little careful with the Knight of Cups because before Romeo meets Juliet, he just thinks he's always in love. He just always just offers his cup, gets his heart broken, not bad as the Page of Cups, but still, you know, he just, who was it that he was in love with? He was getting over some breakup. He was, you know, when, when, um, his friend takes him to the party where he meets Juliet, but he was like, he was mourning some girl. He was mourning the breakup with like, I don't know. So it's kind of like that, you know, you might be, but it's like, was that really, it was a big deal to him because that's how he loves. He's just like super like emotionally very passionate. I really hope you guys are not getting any kind of annoying sound stuff with that. Sorry. And it didn't turn out to be like a big deal because Juliet's the love of his life for real, for real. So you know, there could be a path that, you know, maybe you're like sentimental about it or maybe you kind of like it, but it's not going to mean a whole lot. It won't amount to more than a hill of beans in this crazy world. I've been thinking about Casablanca. I might watch it again soon. Let's take a look at this King of Cups. Who is this person? I saw it. Did you guys see it? Before we do that, Take a look. Oh, strength, two of pentacles, seven of wands. That's hard, man. That's hard. All right, let's see. And it, you see this. This is, I love this. I love my new setup, you guys. I'm loving it. Okay, this landed right on top of your three of swords over here. And it is... It's okay to change your mind. Something doesn't work out. You're working a job, you were so excited about it, and now this job is just, you're not, you've been giving the two-way flow of abundance, you've been putting your time, love, energy, money, passion into this job, and it's not, you're not getting, it's it's not attracting the flow of abundance from the universe, It's, it's you're not getting that back. This is gonna be, this is, this is gonna, this week is going to be feeling it, seeing other options, having a moment of enlightenment, less effort, less pressure, and maybe a nice little message. Okay. Remember, I'm getting... I'm getting the taking away your need to possess and hold on to and manipulate and control. And you will be getting rid of your fear of loss. Whether you're, you fear losing status, reputation, money, love. I mean, we're spiritual people here, okay? This is, we, this is trust, trust. Guidance. Oh, there's a lot of guidance. Crow. Universal laws and truths are now being revealed. Use this energy to create your reality. Nut hatch. Stay grounded and welcome the new knowledge and perspective coming to you. The new knowledge. So there's like a new perspective, all right. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's still backwards though. Like the writing is still, I think it's still backwards. Okay, well, all right. An analogy perspective coming to you. And then you have these two over here. You have the white turkey, the power to heal the earth is within you. And then you have the vulture, accept the inevitable, let go of the past and welcome a rebirth to begin. This is like when you want to leave this job, when you want to leave the work and then you get like fired or something and it's like the, the, it was what you wanted all along and you weren't happy, but, and it's a relief of yours, but you're scared and you're scared to make a change and you're scared to be, it's like all that. So 
a lot of stuff. There's a lot this week. So I love you guys. Take very good care. And until next time, my loves, many beautiful blessings upon all of your beautiful headstonings.